dust friends welcome back today we are going to do a little video on budgeting and planning your family vacation we have coming up in November of this year so we've got like three months um, this was a little bit of a last-minute planned vacation normally my vacations are planned well over six months in advance but we kind of just recently decided to do this vacation. Um, so we have a little bit less time to plan, but that's okay. I'm gonna give you guys some ideas on how we do our budgeting and planning for our vacations. If you are interested in getting some information about a family vacation, feel free to message me. Um, you can either message me via my Facebook page or you can submit um, an information form on my website, which I will put both links in the description below on this video. Um, I am a certified travel agent. I specialize in family vacations, um, especially Disney. Um, so any, you know, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, Legoland, Disneyland, California, um, also Disney Cruise Line, um, Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, I do all of that as well. So if you need any help or have any questions, please feel free to email me or message me. Uh, my services are free. I don't ever charge any, um, you know, fees that you know, go along. My services are free. I never charge any fees for um, answering questions or whatnot. Um, if you do book a vacation with me, I as well don't charge any fees when you book a package. Um, so everything that I'm going to show you today is basically included in the services that I offer when I book a vacation for my clients. So we use what I call the envelope system when we budget for our family vacation. Um, I have this nice little three ring binder right here. Um, it's, I put a little um, worksheet on the front, tilted on its side, and this is basically our itinerary for our upcoming vacation. This is something that I will do out for my clients as well if you request it. Some people like to do their own, um, but I do have this available um, and I can personalize it with pictures of your upcoming vacation as well. This basically gives a day-to-day -day itinerary um, on everything that will be happening every day of our vacation. So inside my binder, I have, um, I like to get the binders that have the pockets so that way I can store my envelopes since this is the envelope system for saving and budgeting. Uh, I like to have um, a place where my envelopes won't fall all over the place. So I like to get the binders that have the pocket in the front and the back. Um, I also like to have a couple of sheet protectors um, for my official budget, which I do out a nice little layout of a budget, which I can help my clients with as well. Um, I also have a little folder that has three holes punched in that will fit in my binder. And this is where I will put my um, like reservation confirmation pages that I print out. Um, you know, my car rental, my, you know, resort stay confirmations, any type of, you know, confirmations that we print out will go in this little um, three ring punched folder. And then um, on the last page, I just have... Um, my packing list, which I haven't officially started yet, um, but that's in the binder as well. I kind of try to keep all of my travel documents together in a nice little binder so that way I can, you know, access them easily. And again, I do the same thing for all of my clients. So each client, it's not quite this detailed um, for my clients unless it's something that you request for me to send you, um, but it's very much along the lines of this. So let's talk about the envelopes and the system that I use for saving because that's what this video is all about is planning a budget and learning how to save um, for each individual portion of your vacation. 
So this is what my envelope saving system looks like. Um, I have about, I think, seven different envelopes. You can use any type of envelopes you like. I also like to use these four by four inch sticky notes, um, the lined sticky notes, because I kind of um, like to be able to keep track of the money that I put into each envelope. Um, but I do one envelope for each portion of the vacation. So this very first portion that we're gonna look at is um, the flight portion of our vacation. So um, as you can see, we're traveling out on the 14th, we're coming back home on the 21st. We've already booked this. I've already taken the money out of this envelope and deposited it into a checking account and used my debit card when I went ahead and purchased the tickets. Um, but the total amount for our tickets was $849.60 and that was um, round trip for three adults and one infant. Um, and you can see that these are the dates that I um, put money into the envelope and as I put money in I deducted it from um, the total so you can see I, you know on the 10th of June I put $200 in and it left me with a balance of $649.60 and again I did that on July and August um, $200 in each month and then just recently I um, had the $249.60 which I didn't put it in the envelope because I was ready at that point at, at that point to um, to go ahead and purchase our tickets. So I took all of the funds out at that point and deposited into our checking account and went ahead and bought the tickets. But I, you know, as I was saving for this, I was keeping a tally of how much more I needed to save. So that is the flight portion. Now this portion right here is a little different as well. Um, if we had had more time to save for this, um, I would have done the same type of um, accounting as I had done with the flight. But because um, we, this was like a last minute decision to do the cruise, um, we actually put the cruise portion right on a credit card right up front because we didn't have any time to make payments. Had we planned this about a year in advance, I would have been able to do this same type of a system. I would have been able to, you know, every month put money in towards my savings and then pay it all off come the due date. Or I could have also set up a payment plan, um, which I offer for all of my customers. I set up a, like a monthly payment plan right on the Disney Cruise Line or Disney Walt Disney World website, um, which that's, you know, taken out monthly from either a credit or debit card. Um, but again, our cruise package um, for just the cruise portion of our vacation was $27.47.60. All right, so this is the portion of our land um, stay. Uh, we are going to be staying at a Disney Springs resort. Used to be downtown Disney Resorts. It's now Disney Springs Resort. Um, and we're going to be staying there from the 14th to the 18th. Our total is $549. I have not had to put a deposit on this yet. Um, so therefore I haven't, uh, you know, this is still the amount that's going to be due when we check into the hotel. So I will be starting to save for this. Um, and again, I will probably, you know, save $20, $30 here and there until I have enough um, saved up in here to take the cash and deposit the cash into a checking account just before we leave so that way I will use those funds specifically for the resort stay. Um, the next portion is our car rental um, and we are going to be renting a car this time um, and we're renting a car because we're doing a lot of travel outside of Disney so we wanted to be able to um, you know have the easy access um, getting back and forth to our hotel and whatnot without having to worry about using public transportation. If we were just staying within Disney then I would have and just doing Disney um, parks then I would have use the Disney transportation and not had to do this, but because we're doing other stuff, I wanted to definitely get a car. Plus it's nice to have a car to be able to go to the cruise terminal 
um, and then you know you have your car waiting for you when you get off the cruise as well but there is transportation for that um, it's just preference on what you want to do but we're getting ours through thr thrifty it's the most reasonable we're getting an SUV and we're gonna have it for the whole week when we pick it up from the airport and then dropping it back off at the airport and our total is 184.04 and I will start saving for this as well and I'm actually going to um, about a week prior to our trip I'm going to take this money that I save up and um, pay it towards a credit card and use the credit card to um, pay for our car rental because um, car rental agencies like credit cards because they sometimes put holds on your funds and if it's in a if it's in a debit card or it's on a debit card or in a checking account, checking account, sometimes it they hold it longer than normal so it's easier to just um, put it on a credit card. So the total for that again is 184.04 and I will save for this the same way as the other. All right, food and dining. Again, um, if you look at my, I'm gonna show you my actual budget inside my book here. Um, everything that I'm talking, every, every envelope that we have, I have a different section in my budget um, four. So we're talking about the food and dining, which is right here. Now we're going to be um, here from the 14th to the 21st. Um, part of that time is going to be on the cruise, so we will be, you know, eating cruise food. So we won't have to worry about food there. But the time that we're not, um, you know, we're going to be going to Epcot Food and Wine Festival. We wanted to budget about 100 for that. Um, Disney Springs, and then we're also doing the Merry, Very, Merry, Very, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Um, so I budgeted about $150 for food for that day. Um, one of the days we're going to Hollywood Studios to see Fantasmic in the evening, um, but during the day we're going to the um, Orlando Outlets. Um, budget about $150. I'm budgeting about $50 per person per day, and there's three of us, um, plus Jameson, which, you know, he's still little, so he doesn't eat very much. Um, Legoland, again, um, we're, we're there for the day, $50 a piece. Um, then the first day that we are cruising out of Port Canaveral, um, we're going to be paying for breakfast that day, but we'll be eating the rest of the day on the cruise ship, so I budgeted about $50 total for that. Then the day that we're in the Bahamas in Atlantis, um, food is very expensive in Atlantis, so I budgeted about $100 um, for lunch because we'll be having breakfast and dinner on the cruise ship, so about $100 for lunch for the three of us um, is a good average, I think, because like I said, it is expensive there, and I wanted to be able to have extra if we want drinks or whatever. Um, I didn't bud budget anything for the day that we're at Castaway K because all of your meals are included and they're right there available for you on the island. Um, it's an all-you-care-to-eat buffet type thing that they set up. It's really good. Um, and then $50 on the day that we come home. So we'll be eating breakfast on the ship, but then when we get back to the airport, our flight is not till a little after 10, so we're probably going to want snacks or a drink or something like that. So... Uh, I budgeted about $50 for that. So that's where I came up with my $750 for my food budget. And again, we'll save for this. All right, the next envelope is our tickets, passes, and excursions. So this is anything extra um, that we're going to have to pay out of pocket for. Now, if you were to book a Disney vacation package, all of these um, would be included in your package price. So you'd be um, having less envelopes to account for if you were doing a package. But since we're not doing a package, um, I'm paying for everything individually. This is just the system that works the easiest. So tickets, passes, and excursions. Um, we have the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, which is the tickets that we need to buy for that. And again, I have those listed over here in my binder. Um, and those are going to cost um, $96.92 per person, and it's going to be a total of $290.76. Um, then we have Legoland, and um, I actually have two passes already to Legoland, um, and I get 50% off for being a travel agent for any additional passes. So it's only going to cost $45.50 for the third pass that we need for Legoland. Um, then we've got the day at Atlantis. Now Atlantis, ex it, Atlantis is very expensive 
Uh, it's a very expensive excursion. It's $161 a person to go. You basically have use of all of the facilities in Atlantis. Um, you can use the water park, the beaches, um, but again, it's $161, so it's going to be about $483 for the three um, adult tickets. Then at Castaway K, we love to rent the snorkels. So that is $29 a person. And we're only going to be renting two of them because only two of us are going to be able to go at the same time because one of us has to stay with Jameson. So that will be a total of $58. So that's where my total of $877.26 comes from. And so I also in red put the dates that I wanted to actually purchase these tickets. Now obviously I want to purchase the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party tickets pretty soon here. Um, obviously you want to do it sooner rather than, rather than wait till later because they do sell out. So I want to purchase these by the 23rd of September. So I want to make sure that I have enough money in my envelope to purchase those by the 23rd. Um, Legoland, I don't need all of it until we actually get there because we purchased the tickets at the window in Legoland. Atlantis, I want to purchase those tickets by the 21st of October. And then the uh, Castaway K Snorkel um, is when we arrive as well. We can do that on the cruise ship when we, whenever we check into the cruise ship. Then our final envelope is our shopping and spending. Now, um, <laughs> this is probably the one that is going to vary the most depending on each person. Um, we like to have a little bit of money, you know, set aside for each one of us to spend. This is definitely, um, you know, we, we definitely don't have to budget this much. And we probably won't even use this much, but we like to have it just in case. So we give Alyssa a budget of about $250. Sean budgets about $300 for himself. We like to collect signed art. Um, and especially if, we, especially if we're going to be in Disney Springs, there's a place that we get our signed art from. Um, I budgeted like $50 for Jameson, if you, you know, a stuffed toy or souvenir or ornament or something like that. Um, and then again, $300 for myself. Um, I like to, you know, get gifts and giveaways um, for clients when they book their vacation packages through me. I usually send a nice little, you know, thank you gift to them. So I like to buy, you know, giveaways and gifts while I'm actually in Disney and or in Orlando. So I budgeted about three hundred. So that's where I came up with the nine hundred dollars, and um, we'll be starting to save the nine hundred dollars for our spending and shopping. Now, typically, that would be all of the envelopes that I would use for budgeting for our vacation. I do have one other envelope that is like a continuous um, envelope that I save money in continuously for, and that is for our Disney annual passes. Now, I kind of keep this envelope separate than my other envelopes. Um, what I usually do is I usually just paper clip these ones together. That's, you know, those were the ones that I just showed you. I paper clip these together, keep those in, you know, one section of my binder. And then I keep this one separate. Um, basically, um, how I do our annual passes for Disney is they're $882.89 a piece. Now, Alyssa is now 14, so she is considered an adult pass. And Jameson is um, only eight months, so we don't have to pay for him until he's two years old, so he's free. So there's three adult passes, which total $2,648.67 oh, $2, a year for our annual passes. I don't like to renew our annual passes all at the same time. I like to renew them um, during different months. So we do Alyssa's in September because that's when her birthday is. So usually that's part of her birthday gift is her annual pass. So I will um, pay for Alyssa's in September. Um, I'll buy mine in October and then I'll buy Sean's in November. That way it splits up the money so it's not you know, so much all at once every year. Um, and that's actually broken down to $220.72 a month. So I make sure that $220.72 is saved in this envelope for the prior year. So when, you know, September comes around again, we can just take the funds out of the envelope and, you know, put it on the credit card and, you know, pay for our 
annual passes like that. So that is the final envelope that we have um, in our binder. Um, there are a few tips that I also wanted to give you guys is that we use for um, actually saving money. Um, my husband has, or Sean has an actual, um, out of his paycheck every other week, because he, get, he gets paid every other week. So out of his paycheck, we take a percentage of that and put that towards all of our, you know, vacation expenses. Um, but in addition to that, I use some of my money that I receive um, for being a travel agent, and I put that towards it. Um, but then there's the other stuff. The, or the other money that we save. Uh, and I like to get Alyssa involved in saving for our vacations. So we do other things such as um, we turn in all of our um, redeemable bottles. And so, you know, once a month we'll take all of our, you know, soda bottles or water bottles or anything that we get a five cent um, bottle deposit return on. We'll take all of those, bring those to the supermarket, um, collect the money and then we'll take that money and put that into our um, or divvy that up and put that into our envelopes to save as well. Um, we also do a spare change type of bin. We have a centrally located little jar that we all throw our spare change in whenever we get change, you know, it gets thrown in the bottom of my purse or it gets thrown in the car vehicles. We'll empty that out pretty regularly and dump that in our change bin. And then like once a month, we'll take that change bin and we'll go down to the grocery store again and dump it in the change counter. Um, I know my bank also has a change counter that they don't charge you for to count the change um, as long as it's deposited into a, an account. So what I do is I'll deposit the money into the account, but then I'll just um, withdraw the money like the next day and take the cash and, and put them in our envelopes. Alyssa also gets an allowance, which we let her do what she wants with her allowance. Sometimes she saves it. Sometimes she, you know, has things that she wants to buy, that she wants to spend. Um, she does like to save her money for vacation. So in that case, we usually will take, you know, if she has babysitting money or allowance money, she'll give us the money and we'll put the money into our savings um, spending envelope right here under, you know, we'll put that Alyssa deposited, you know, $45 or something like that in that um, envelope. And we'll just mark that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways that we save for our vacation as a family. And you'd really be surprised how quickly small amounts add up. And um, I know this vacation, like I said, is a very um, last minute type of vacation. So I feel like I don't really have as much saved um, as I'm going through these with you right now. Um, but normally my vacation vacations are planned about a year or even more in advance. And the longer vacations are the ones that are easier to save for because you obviously have a longer amount of time to save for them. Um, so those ones, um, I think the system works a little bit better with rather than the last minute vacations. But yeah, again, last minute vacations, we can, you know, save our change and stuff towards spending money for this one as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, my tips on how we save and if I can help you at all with your family vacation or if you're interested in these, um, you know, documents that I use, um, please message me. Again, I'd be happy to help you out. And other than that, have a magical day.